Hey yo, LAZ Throwback Thursdays, you heard, I know I just released this joint, but I had to re-release it because it was a couple of small errors that I wanted to correct in the video, you heard, plus YouTube was slightly hating on my bag, you know what I mean, Gen Pop fam in the building, Slim Blunt gang in the building, Comment gang in the building, I need y'all to tear this to shreds, you heard, holla at me. I was with Art Bar from Jersey, Chuck from Cypress. Like, these is real. That's why I'm in the street now doing the right thing. Because when I fell and I was with them dudes, they told me it's over. The drug game is over. Scooter, all them is right now. A lot of them ain't never getting up. You know what I mean, say? Yeah, my first time on Rikers Island was 1986. And you know how when you get off the bus, you come in the receiving room, Automatically, you know it's on because they got the why me pin. You know, when you hear that at first, you don't know what the f that is. You just see them dragging out from somewhere and throwing them up in there. And that's when you know it's on. You know, when I came through, it was hanging out the ceiling and, and, and you know, going up there trying to get them a gun. You know what I mean? Like the, the metal from the, from the lights, all that was all broken up in the cell. This was soon as you come in the receiving room. You know what I'm saying? You mean you mean the, the ceilings was caving in in the receiving room cells? No, no, the ceilings wasn't caving in. It was this had already broke all the lighting up and you know they had those like metal mm. lighting things that hold the lights in it. Yeah. yeah. Broke all that off. All that was all broke off. It's, it's popping off. Soon as, listen, the island in 86, soon as you come in the receiving room, it's on and popping. Like in the receiving room is going down. And don't, don't, and sometimes when you gotta be there later, they'll take you to the mess hall from the receiving room because y'all didn't get no house yet, you know? As soon as you go in the mess hall, niggas are stepping to you right there. Like, yo, what up? So, like I said, for me, new experience, right? And fast forward, when, when they, when I had got my time and got sentenced and everything, you know, they put you on the bus going upstate. You know, when we young, you was going to Elmira reception. The adults was going to downstate, you know? Yeah, I heard, I heard. That's what dudes was getting a letter B, right, from Elmira? Yeah, 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 86, I was 86B, you know what I mean? So you go to Elmira reception, and it's, it's, it's on from there, you know? Because a lot of times when niggas was stabbing niggas on the island and getting into shit with niggas there, most niggas who, who ain't really had no juice, you don't really know who they are with them. But when they get up north, they team might have a little, you know, more juice. So that's why a lot of beasts up north was different from the island. Because it, it, when I was there, wasn't no bloods and crips and all of that. You had to just be a man. You know what I mean? You had to stand up and, and hold your own down. We was wearing New York clothes. It wasn't no, you could wear whatever. If you came through with a leather and a sheepskin and jewelry on, you can wear that. You just got to be able to hold it down. You understand know what I'm saying? My brother knew. My brother Malik, they was wearing their jewelry. I wasn't really into jewelry like that. So it wasn't nothing about that with me. You know, I, I, I'm i easy to say everybody have their own way of they deal with that shit. I wasn't in jail trying to be the, the baddest, super baddest motherfucker in there. You know, I just wanted to be who I was and get out. And like I was telling you, once you was in, once I left Elmira, they put me on a bus and they designated me to Kaksaki. So when I get to Kaksaki, it's like, oh shit, that's like a whole new world, you know? It's like, it's, it's, it's a, it's a rougher rock as, right as Island until you get up in there and you don't know nobody. Now, when I got there, it was the Bronx and Brooklyn was running shit. Big Spady, um, Homicide, Suicide. On um, Black O, Ike Livingston, a lot of niggas from Brownsville, Bo Skaggs. Like, it was these niggas from up the hill that I knew from Brownsville, you know? So me as coming from Brownsville, I was like, oh, okay. The team is here, you know? Like, yeah. Back then, you could wear your do-rags. We had the BBD nylons. You know, this was back then. That's why I said when I heard how you was talking about your people, I'm like, okay. I, that was like in the 90s. I don't know if they were still rocking like that then, you know? In Kaksaki, they used to have some shit called a movie theater. That they take, they line up the unit, you go with your popcorn and your chips and shit, and they march the whole unit to the fucking movie theater. They had a movie theater set up in there. 
and we be watching movies and niggas be going to the movies. You had your do rag, your, your BBD nylon. Yo, we was, the, you know, we from New York City, so we come, we that's how we was carrying it. We had the D the door. You know, we wearing our shit. Cause like I said, when you come from the island, you was able to bring your regular clothes with you. Oh, they they so didn't they got, didn't take away your clothes when you went up north from the island. No, listen, listen. When we left Rikers Island, they packed all your shit. I had Benetton sweaters, silk shirts. I can send you my pictures. I had valleys, silk shirts, valleys. When we went when we went up north from the island, nigga, we had five bags of clothes, New York clothes. That's crazy. And most yeah, and back then, niggas could confirm. Back then, most niggas was trying to get green because you figured you go, like I had the green and white nights. You know, the uptowns, and you want to get, everybody knew you going to be matching the green. So you got the green silk shirt. You know, some niggas had, you know, you still had to have the colors from up north. When niggas had the burgundy. You could take sneakers, towels, because that's how niggas, like your, your sheets, so you could take, like you could have burgundy sheets, burgundy towels. This is how niggas used to decorate they cell. They wasn't letting y'all take no pants though, right? Listen, you could take all your shit. When you get to down, when you get up there, they gonna tell you what you can't have. But when you leave the island, all your shit is go with you. Ain't nothing unless you leaving something to somebody. That's but crazy. most motherfuckers, yeah, when we was going up north, you could take all your shit with you. Cause when you get up there to reception, they'll tell you you can send it home. Cause like I said, niggas had leather coats. You know, on the island back then, you could have a sheepskins and leather jackets niggas walking around in the hallway in. It wasn't no, like it was real like that back then. When I came through in, in 86, right, or in C-74, they come to you, go up to the officer and you have your property and they say you want to turn your jewelry in or you want to keep it. They gave you a choice. Your clothes was automatic, you know, because most people only had on they one pair of clothes, you know? Mm -hmm. It ain't like when you came from court, you had whatever, you just had what you got on. And they asked you, do you want to turn it in or not? Most people just said fucking and went through with they shit if they felt they could hold it. And like I said, when you go on a visit, you know, most people said, yo, you wearing your new clothes and that's when you got that day tag and shit like that because niggas had other niggas wash their clothes. You know, they had clothes from New York and they had niggas who washed clothes. You know, they did it to make money, but you know that you know what that was. You know what I mean? Niggas with sons or whatever, day tag. Yo, wash my shit off, fuck you, or whatever. You know what I mean? <laughs> some niggas have claimed that they doing it to make some money, you know what I mean? But, you know, they, you know what they call that in the street, you know? Yo, you was a maid tag up there washing niggas' clothes, you know what I mean? Cause that was some real shit. Or you could send your shit home, and they could bring it back on a visit, and and give you new clothes. Like the clothes shit was out of control on the album. Man, niggas, listen, I'm telling you, I was a real nigga up there. I had valleys. When I got the cat sacky, man, I'ma tell you straight up, Bo Skaggs. If niggas know Bo Skaggs was there, um, Ease from Bread Star, like Brooklyn was definitely in the house. Sean Du, um, I'm the big Spady, like I said, Black O, Ike Livingston, Homicide, Suicide, all of these dudes, True, all these dudes I knew, Wives, I knew them just from running around in the streets, right? So one day, when I go, when I go to the yard, you know, when they finally let me go to the center yard, because they got the center yard, and they got the north yard, and they got the big yard that faced green. Like sometimes they open up the big yard in the back and you can see green, cause you know green is right behind Catsack. So what they do is every every now and then like around the summertime, they open up the big yard and let all the houses go out there together, you know? Mm. Most of the time you don't stay out there long cause everybody, everybody trying to prove they self at that time. Cause sometimes you'll stay in Catsacky until they re classify you and they were sending niggas to Attica or Auburn so it was always beef with Cat Sacky and other jails because they are send nigga from one jail to the next niggas a blazer nigga or it was always beef with the jails like if you come from the Cat and go to Attica you better be ready for war when you get there just coming from the Cat because niggas already got beef niggas come from Attica or Auburn to Cat Sacky it was on it was just that type of situation back then was it Spanish gangs in the cat? I, I'm not going 
gonna lie to you, I don't remember. I remember they being together, but I don't remember. I hear stories with dudes saying the Latin Kings and the Net Dodge and used to be. To me, I guess I didn't see that. You know, like I told you back in '86. You know, the guards and the Muslims, obviously. You know, the five percenters and the Muslims. But I don't remember like a lot of Spanish gangs. Like I knew you. You knew the, them Spanish niggas. Most of them from the Bronx. They was holding their own. Like, they had their own name. But I'm from Brownsville, you know? So I don't really know a lot of niggas. Like, if you wasn't from there or to be a name knower like that, unless I am. Like, I know one Puerto Rican I knew, but like I said, he was from Brooklyn. Little Un, Little Understanding was a Spanish nigga that I knew that was doing his thing up in there, you know? But I didn't, I guess they was on the other side. You know how the, in the four building is two, four, six, and on the other side, I guess it's one, three, and, and whatever over there. So they was like in one, one lower, one upper. You know, it was some, that was the one of the house that I knew a lot of Spanish dudes was in on the other side. No, what I was getting ready to tell you, I remember a time, because like I said, this is a story about Big Spade from Brownsville, those who know. He was one of them ones, like he stayed in the gym. He damn near ran the jail. He had the movie job, like all the best jobs in the jail. You know, niggas trying to get to the best. Everybody want the best job, you know? He from he up the hill? From, yeah, no, nah, he's from Brownsville. He's like from, um, I want to say Van Dyke. Where's Spady from Van Dyke? Oh, Brownsville, how's that? But I know they, he, if, the dudes who know Big Spady, you can ask in your comments or whatever. Big Spady from Brownsville. You know who be talking about him? On um, the mayor of Brownsville, Franklin C. Franklin, he be saying Bay Park, like Spady used to say Bay Park. Now, I know Spady from New York City, from the town, because he was always running around with a long trench coat and the motherfucking shotgun. He was one of them niggas. Like when Big Spady come on the block, because he was a cop, he used to work out all the time in the in the town, you know what I mean? Mm. So when I got up north, when I got to catch that here, seen him there, he was like, oh shit, no D, what up? You know what I mean? Cause I, you know, he really, I knew him from my family, from my father and shit, you know? Mm. So he was like, yo, what up? So like I said, he was running shit. So one day, black folk, black from Brownsville too, we go up in the gym. Now Spady is running the gym. When you come inside the weight room, you can't even touch the weights. Like this nigga got all the weights in the weight room and you can't even touch him until he finished. This is how much he had that shit locked. It was niggas could confront him this. Like, you couldn't even do no working out until he was finished. Like, that's how he was running the gym. So, me and a nigga tried to test him. Like, on some, yo, yeah. knock out, boom, right in the weight room, no nothing. Nigga, wake up. He's nobody coming to save you. That's how the cat sack you was. You'll get hit in there, and nobody's coming to save you. They'll find you later on. So, we in there, me and Black were like, yo, what the fuck is happening? And then just a nigga just wake up and walk out like when the nigga finally wake up. I'm like, yo, I'm not fucking with that nigga, son. This nigga, I'm telling you, Saint, this nigga was a monster. And niggas could confirm. What did your comments do? Niggas in Brownsville remember Big Spady when he was. Now, when I was the cat second, like I said, this was 86. Niggas was in there, white boy Coleman. Niggas had 79 numbers. You been around, you know that's how niggas dictate how your level is sometimes. When you up north, like by what, you, what your den number is, you know what I mean? Where they can respect how long you been down or not, you know? Like, if you coming in at 86 and the nigga got a 79 number, you gonna get a little respect if you holding it down, you know what I mean? Cause you like, man, this nigga got a 79 number? Mm -hmm. Man, he already been in. You know, a nigga right now with an 89 number, 2021, you know, that's real shit when you're in the max right now. Hell this yeah. nigga's in max jails right now with 89 numbers, you know what I mean? This nigga's in there with 86 numbers, you know? And all of them ain't on no parole violation, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, this some real shit, you know what I mean? Like, but like I said, man, I, I, I love the platform and I love to, you know, give the knowledge because I know it's gonna get to these youths that we don't want them to go through this shit, you know what I mean? It's a fact. That's a yeah, fact. we tell, yeah, we telling them because this ain't nothing to glorify. Like I'm not trying to say how fun it was. I'm letting you know it's some place you don't want to go. You know, you don't want to have to go to Rikers Island. You don't want to have to go upstate. You want to go to school. You want to go to college. You want to own your own business. You know, 
I try to give them that. You know what I mean, Saint? No doubt. So, yeah. how long you stayed in Kaksaki? Well, I was in Kaksaki for about 18 months. And then they packed me up and they sent me to Fishkill. Now, Fishkill, once I got to Fishkill, Fishkill was more of a jail where you're about to go home. Because I went up north with a two to six. I had an armed robbery. So, I went up north with a two to six. I had an armed robbery from Union Square. Those who know, it used to be a club, Union Square, back in the day, or a hip hop club, you know? Mm. So I had caught an armed robbery out there, and that's how I wind up getting up north. It was crazy, you know, just wilding out in the town. What you mean? You but caught like you I, was you was in the club? Tried, you caught somebody coming I, out the club? Yeah, yeah. Me and my brother, my, the guard Tislam, we used to be together. And, you know, back then, niggas used to be on some, you know, niggas run that jury. It's some jury shit, you know? So we caught an armed robbery back then, wind up catching a two to six. And like I said, when I left fucking Katsaki, they packed me up, sent me to fish kill. Paul and self, y'all got nabbed on the spot or like niggas knew y'all and told yeah, on y'all? You know, no, back then, because in 86 now, I was 18, right? Mm. So I ain't had no cars. When we used to go uptown to the fever and all of that stuff, we had to take the train. So when everybody leaving Union Square, most everybody's getting on the train because we all in that same age group, you know what I mean? Mm. And that's where we caught a nigga on that shit, you know? Mm. So like I said, once I left Katsaki, I got the fish scale. Now when I got the fish scale, they got the main building, they got the 21 and 21A building. Now the main building is mostly when you first come in, they keep you there and like, it's like a it's like a reception, but it's not, they do got some people that still live there. But once you get classified to the jail, they most people go to the 21 or 21A building. But for the most part, Fish Kill, you know it's close to New York. We listening to BLS. You know, we listening to the good radio station. You know, motherfuckers want to hear the good radio to do they good when you up north. You know what I mean? Everybody want to be close to New York, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, Fish Kill was one of them spots. You know, it was somewhere like people wanted to be because it was close to home. It was easy to get visits. Like we used to get night visits, you know what I mean? So when we used to, when I was at Fish Kill, I wound up getting a job in the visiting room. So mind you, when I got the job in the visiting room, I was hooked up with some Jamaican niggas in the jail that put me on that, yo, they could bring the stuff in and put it in the bid room and you could just go pick it up <laughs> and bring it back to the head housing unit, you know? Mm. I was like, what? He was like, yeah, hey, that shit was what it was, you know what I mean? So fish scale was, that's when niggas used to talk about fish scale Motherfuckers running around with cash in their pockets, you know what I mean? Yeah, I was hearing and about was, that. Yeah, that's real shit. I'm going to confirm that. That was real. Like, they was dealing with cash in there. Like, on a visit, a <laughs> motherfucker up past you some bread. Yeah, like I said, man, all of that jail shit, look back on it, if you can use it to elevate, that's what I try to do. Like, I could talk about these stories with a clear mind because I use them for ammunition to move forward in my life to know where I don't want to go. Because that's what it's about to me. I want to, I want these youth, I want these people to know it's not about glorifying it, it's just trying to give them to say that's what you don't want to go through. Like I said, some of it might sound like a fun, or you know, when you hear it in a rap song, some of that shit, but you know, it's not the place you want to be, you know? Like some of these jails is very dangerous and you know, I'm one of the ones that was lucky to make it out without a scar, without a, a slash. Because when I was on Rikers Island, everybody was getting stabbed. And, and, and that's where the term come from, a buck fifty. Because they would slash you with a razor blade, you know? And and nobody wants to come home like that to their family when you're just going to do a bid, you know what I'm saying? Was dudes still getting cut and stabbed like on a regular basis in Kagsaki in 86? Man, Kaksaki was a bloodbath. Like, it was not, it, like I said, it had to be, it was more, like I said, it wasn't bloods and crips and gang shit mostly. It was more borough shit, because you know it's a New York jail. So, it's more Bronx be with Bronx, Brooklyn be with Brooklyn, Queens with Queens. Then you got them up north dudes, you got the Albany dudes from Albany, New York. You got dudes from Rochester, New York, you know? 
So you got them upstate dudes. So it was more of that type of clip. And that's what, what the clashes was. Because niggas from Rikers Island and, and, and the five boroughs, they wasn't respecting no, no upstate nigga. You know what I mean? A nigga from Albany or Rochester, Buffalo, you don't get no burn unless you really bout that life. You know what I'm saying? So that drew a lot of beef because niggas wasn't... Man, when we coming from Rikers Island, we the tough, we the baddest motherfuckers in the world. That's just how niggas was thinking, you know what I mean? We came from Rikers Island. Rikers Island is worse than any jail up north to niggas, you know what I mean? Like, so when a nigga come from Rikers Island, you ain't care what jail they sent you. You think you you ready, you know what I mean? Because that's, that's just what Rikers Island gets your, your part. Once you walk out of there and you done did whatever there and you was able to survive that, it ain't, it's like if you could do it in New York, you could do it anywhere, baby. Yeah, but I was just, I, I'm tight. I lost that little piece though. You feel what I'm saying? Cause you was you was saying some ill shit. But I was asking you, um, but you know, I know it was a lot of upstate dudes, like you said, Albany dudes, Rochester, Buffalo dudes. Like you said, them dudes was up there holding it down too though. Yeah, like I said, now I gotta keep it 100 cause I used to be up in Albany and Schenectady. So like I said, it's real dudes everywhere. And I'll be playing a lot of my own people that I fuck with if I say that they didn't hold it down. All I'm saying is that they did not have nothing on niggas from the Bronx and niggas from Brooklyn. And when I say niggas from Brooklyn, Brownsville, I'm just talking about when I was there. You understand what I'm saying? Brownsville had Cat Sacky locked down. And anybody want to motherfucking put it in the comments. If you want to say I'm rough, cause Big Spady by himself had that shit on lock. Who, who who was Big Spady? Who did he fuck with? Like Big Spady was his own army. He's a one man record machine. Listen, say check your comments and tell niggas do they know who Big Spady from Brownsville is? That's it. They go. I'm not. Fr I told you the dude. The mayor of Brownsville, C. Franklin, he always talk about Big Baby, say Bay Park, Bay Park. He had motherfucking Cat Stacky on lock. It's nobody can't front and say I'm fronting, son. What other, what else, what other type of shit he was doing in the cat, though? So he was knocking niggas out one punch. He had police on lock. Police, that was the only nigga you ever seen walk around the jail. This on with without this on his own, like where he going in, going there. Ask niggas now if you ever, <laughs> I don't know if you, but niggas in Cat Sacky know when you come through the hallway, when you walk through the hallway and they bring the unit, back then I'm saying, they come with the police and it'd be probably, I think it was like 20 of us on a unit or something like that. So when you walk through, it's like the Rikers Island was back then. When you go on the child, it's 20 a yard, they take you down the child, the door right there, they open. This nigga used to be walking through the hallway by himself, son. Going, moving around like police. This <laughs> Niggas ain't never do that jail shit like Big Spade. Yeah, I, I'm bigging him up. That's my pick. That's my pick. It ain't dick riding when it's your people. That's my people. He was holding down. When I got there and seen that, I said, I damn motherfucker act up. And I was a little nigga. I'm five something, nigga. And I was <laughs> talking big shit in there. The police used to tell me, buddy, they gonna get your ass. Cause you talking about this shit. I said, yeah, cause, come on. Cause the niggas I had from Brownsville, I'm telling you the niggas I'm naming, son, I'm not fronting, son. The Brownsville had that shit on lock. Now, don't get me wrong, cause like I said, I had niggas from, I fuck with Big Mike and them from, from, from the Bronx. It was some real niggas in there, Shane, on um, Black Shane from the Bronx. It was some real niggas in there, though. For me, Homicide, Suicide, Ike Livingston, Black Old, Spady, True, Volska. That's Brownsville right there. All oh, niggas made niggas. I don't know how the fuck we all got in that jail at the same time. You was not doing that. My man True used to be not. And Vaheem, Vaheem from Brownsville was there. Come on, man. The niggas check the records, man. Brownsville had Cat Sacky on lock in 86. Look at the comments, ask them. Who wanna, who wanna, who wanna, who wanna deny that? Y'all wasn't seeing nothing if you came back. I'm saying every generation, really, I ain't gonna say that, because every generation, you know, it's a different thing when you coming through there, you know what I mean? So I can't front like, you know what I mean?
what I mean? Because every year is different. Every year, and you know, if you go to any day, you do one day until you gotta prove yourself. You know what I mean? Say, so I'm not the type to front the same niggas with less than whatever. You know what I mean? Because everybody got their own different era type shit. You know? Mm -hmm. I just came through in a different era. That's all it is. I don't. I'm not no disrespectful dude or whatever like that. You know, I respect everybody, but it's it's different eras. You know? Now what that '86. That 86 and eight, 86 to 88 era was vicious though. Yeah, because that was also the crack era. So imagine what's going on with the drugs. That was this how they talk about how much money niggas was getting on the streets. Imagine in the jail. Hmm. What? Like I said, if you the, and what you dictate as money back then, it was how many cans. Because back then you could have new ports. You know, niggas was having cartons of Newports, mad cans of tuna fish. This was catch that shit. You know, mad bars of soap, tone soap, dial soap. You know what I mean? That was the shit. I had a hundred bars of tone. You know what I mean? To this day, I can't use tone, man, because I use that shit in the penitentiary so much that I, I just can't even mess with it no more. Listen, like I said, man, I respect your channel. It's a blessing for me to come up here to give some of these stories with you and chop it up. Like I said, man, I got my own little thing going on and I respect you giving me the platform to just teach these brothers and like I said, give them a little knowledge. It's, yeah, we gonna reminisce and might get a little hype at times, you know what I mean? But it's really for the, like I said, to show them that this is what we don't want them to go there. I don't want them to have these stories. I'd rather right now be telling you a story about how I went to Howard University. And right now, I own a Fortune 500 company, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But that's not the case. But what I am showing them is that it is life after that prison shit. Don't wait until you get out. If you happen to see this and you is in prison, don't wait until you get out. Start working on that. Go to school now. Go take a GED while you're in there. You know, use it for rehabilitation. Rehabilitate yourself. Don't wait for the, for the, for the, for the authorities in there to rehabilitate you, you know what I mean? And that's why I think a lot of the bullshit happens in prison because dudes so used to being hand fed in some instances, they don't even know how to do it. I was meeting dudes in jail saying they didn't even know how to wash up. They didn't even know what cosmetics was, you know what I mean? A nigga be like, go get your cosmetics. And it's like, what's that, you know? So that let me know they wasn't even taking showers and taking care of themselves in the street, you know what I mean? But like I said, man, I appreciate you, man. I appreciate the time. I hope this helps somebody, you know what I mean? And, and you know I got my book out. You got to make sure that, you know, I got the book that I'm telling stories about my dad from the Wild Bunch. Wild Bunch, the dimensions of a Brownsville millionaire. Make sure y'all go get that on Amazon. And, you know, whenever you want me, we can reminisce, man. I got plenty of stories to keep these kids on the right track, bro. Anytime you got a fire story, my bro, just holla at me, text me, call listen, me. Don't make me listen. Don't make me. I was in the feds with Lou Hobbs and I got pictures of these is real niggas, son, that hold it down. Like with the niggas I was with, I was with Art Bar from Jersey, Chuck from Cyprus. Like these is real niggas. That's why I'm in the street now doing the right thing. Cause when I fell and I was with them dudes, they told me it's over. The drug game is over. Scooter, all them niggas is right now, a lot of them niggas ain't never getting out. You know what I mean, say? So when you get in the feds and you get around these certain dudes, it's a different story than running in and out of state prison. When you get in a one to three up north and a two to six and a five to 15, you know, that might seem like a lot, but when you 20, you come home, you might think you still can rock and roll. But when you catch a fed bit and now everybody of you around out a hundred years, you gonna wake the fuck up. If you ain't never wake up before, you gonna wake up if you ever do a fed bit. So I don't want you to have to go find out. Listen to me. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do nothing. Get your ass a job. Save your money. Invest your money. And do you, man. That's a fact, bro. That's a Listen, I fact. appreciate you, man. Like I said, I love your content. I love what you're doing. Man. Keep doing what you're doing. And, you know, we can get back together and see how this thing works and keep, keep pushing, man.